the power of stars like our sun is the result of small atoms combining into larger ones. It's a nuclear reaction known as fusion. Shining down in the form of electromagnetic radiation, some of which we see as sunlight, it powers our planet's weather, drives its water cycle, and supplies the energy needed for life. This energy comes from a rather surprising place. It comes from the mass of particles that make up the sun. Take the nucleus of a certain type of helium atom, for example, also called an alpha particle. It's made of two protons and two neutrons. Its atomic mass is 4.00153 units. But if you weighed the masses of two protons and two neutrons on their own, they'd add up to a total of 4.03188 units. The difference is tiny, but some of that mass changed into other forms of energy when the nucleons were squeezed close together. This is called an atom's binding energy. Different elements have different amounts of binding energy, and we can compare them on a graph. A single proton on its own, as a form of hydrogen, has no binding energy. As the isotope deuterium, a proton and a neutron that underwent fusion would release a small amount of binding energy. Added to another deuterium nucleus to make helium, a much larger amount of energy would be released. As elements get heavier, differences in binding energy become smaller. Beyond iron, atoms get so heavy they release energy not as they grow, but as they break apart. When uranium undergoes fission to turn into an element like barium, it releases a tiny bit of energy. This is far less than the energy released as hydrogen combines into helium. This makes the fusion of small elements a far more impressive potential source of energy than the fission of big ones. Let's see just how much energy. Instead of combining two deuterium particles, a more practical process involves sticking together a deuterium and another hydrogen isotope called tritium, which has two neutrons instead of one. The product is a helium nucleus and a single spare neutron. The mass of a single atom of deuterium can be rounded off to about 3.345 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. The mass of the tritium is about 5.01 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Both masses add up to 8.355 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. But in the form of helium, plus a free neutron, the total mass is just 8.324 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. A tiny 3.1 times 10 to the negative 29 kilograms of mass seems to vanish. Remember Einstein's famous equation? Energy equals mass times a super huge number, the speed of light squared. If we mixed two kilograms of deuterium with three of tritium, roughly 20 grams of mass would become other forms of energy. The difference between the reactants and the products would release 1.8 times 10 to the power of 15 joules as heat. That's enough to power about 50,000 homes for a year. Unfortunately, unlocking any of it requires technology that can mimic the processes at work inside stars. Usually, intense gravity would provide the energy needed to force nucleons together. The good news is we can do the same job on Earth using heat. The bad news? The temperature required is over 100 million degrees Celsius. That's about seven times hotter than the interior of the sun. Nuclear fusion was conceived as a possible energy source in the 1930s. 
Since then, researchers have investigated a number of approaches for heating a gas made of small elements, such as deuterium, to the point they sustainably undergo fusion. Two of the most promising forms of technology involve heating up a ring of gas called a plasma inside a donut-shaped tube called a torus. Plasma isn't exactly easy to control. Not only does it squirm like a ring of jelly, but its super hot charged particles will quickly cool once they touch any surface. To keep the plasma hovering in place, two types of reactor use magnetic fields. Accelerator reactors use banks of magnetic coils to manage this task. Germany's Wendelstein 7X is leading the way in research on this form of fusion reactor. Its magnetic coils make the plasma easier to control, but at a cost. It's a lot harder to reach the high temperatures required. In contrast, tokamak reactors use the electromagnetic fields produced by the plasma. This is a lot more complicated, but can allow for more efficient heating. In 2018, China's experimental advanced superconducting tokamak reached the all-important 100 million degrees required for fusion. In southern France, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor has been looking for ways to refine the fusion process. It hopes to be producing plasma using tokamak technology by 2025. While a milestone in temperature is good news for fusion, for net power to be produced, this heat needs to be sustained for long periods. It's a goal well worth pursuing. Compared with the uranium needed for fission, the fuel for fusion is much easier to collect. The hydrogen isotope deuterium can be extracted from seawater using hydrolysis. Tritium is another isotope of hydrogen with two neutrons and one proton. It's much harder to find on Earth, but could still be made by bombarding lithium with neutrons, or separated from water in a heavy water-cooled reactor. Either way, the end product of fusion is helium. No greenhouse gases or significant amounts of radioactive waste are produced, making fusion an appealing choice in green power. <laughs>